Hey guys, welcome to the No Name Podcast, where we don't have a name yet, but we just rocked and rolled and started this podcast. My name is Brian Tran, and I got my co-host here, PJ. What up, what up? And he, on this podcast, we talk all things business on how to start so that you guys can really excel and really blast through and become financially independent, financially wealthy, so you can go out there and crush it. But today's episode is real special because I got a special guest. We got none other than Jonathan Sue with Focus Media. Say what's up. Hey everyone, I'm John with Focus Media. How's everyone doing? And the reason why John is so special in this episode is because he's 24 years old. He started the company at 23 and I wanted to bring on his story because he was able to really excel very rapidly with minimal mistakes and now well on his way. The company's making well over six figures. He's earning a good job. And the cool part is his background isn't, you know, his family wasn't in business. He wasn't in business but he was able to do it very quickly, and I want to share that story today. So we're going to kick it off. Jonathan, introduce yourself. Um, how'd you get started? How long has the company been around? Sweet. Okay, yeah. So, hey everyone. I'm John, founder of Focus Media. And, well, this company, as of today, of this recording, we are 11 months old as of today, which yeah. is kind of crazy. I graduated college back in December 2021. And right after that, I went to Brian. I was just like, we we're both just like, screw it. Let's start this media company because we realized like the summer before in 2021 that there was a market for all of this. There was people, there's realtors needing more listing packages, better marketing videos and photos because nowadays it's all about social media now, right? Yeah. And then now, then we started seeing, I started shooting content for Brian here and then we realized, hey, other realtors need content too. So I'm going to leverage my photo and video skills that I've already had for the past eight years. And let's make a company. Let's go make some business. Yeah. So Jonathan was actually my intern May 2021. We, we were doing a lot of the TikToks. We were doing a lot of the YouTube and just trying to figure it out. And then I realized that, look, there's there's definitely a market for this. And I told him like, quit school let's let's start this thing but he he was like no i gotta go back to school i gotta finish this thing in, in december yes yeah, so quit school i was already i had one semester left at that point i already spent like four years in school might as well finish it yeah so let's take it back a little bit more so i, I mean let's go back to your, your upbringing right did your family did they do business or what did your mom and dad do no actually both my parents in a sense they came here as immigrants then really even I don't even know if they even really have a high school diploma. I think maybe they might have gotten their GED, mm. maybe. But I don't even think they really have any education as when they came to America, they came during the Vietnam War. So we all know about all that. So they came here essentially with like nothing but just wh whatever family members we had here. But then even then, we were all immigrants. No one was really making the big bucks. So I didn't even really... I was grown up with the whole thing of, you know, Go to school, get good grades, get a good job, buy a house, so get a family. your dad was a W-2 employee? Yep. Both of my parents were W-2 employees, except definitely my dad was the breadwinner. He made the most money, but yeah. at the end of it, it's still, you know, he. I'd see him wake up 3 a.m. every day, go to work, come back at 3, tired as shit, didn't want to even, like, really do anything anymore, and he just chills and maybe even naps and then repeats Monday yeah. through Friday. Sometimes even on Saturdays over time, just because so, he needed the money. So he put you through school, but again, he worked for a company. Your mom worked for a company. Nobody actually went out there and started it. So that's a good start, right? Because it's important to note that because I think a lot of new entrepreneurs, they're like, well, I don't know where to start. My family didn't have business. My mom and dad uh, didn't hand me anything. Dude, most people don't get handed crap. Yeah, yeah. It's you definitely know? like a crippling mindset that yeah, a lot of people have in the beginning. And that's the cool thing about mm -hmm. Jonathan. Like, look, this stuff can be taught. This stuff can be learned. And yeah, um, that's going to lead me to my next question. My, my, I'm sorry. My next question for Jonathan is like, what do you think allowed you to become number one profitable from the start? And and we've you already broke six figures for the year. The mm -hmm. company already made six figures. You've yep. already made six figures. So 11 months in, why? What, what What's the secret sauce? I would say probably the number one, like, secret to all of this and really without this thing it really wouldn't have happened and it's really having a mentor and having someone who has done it already teach you and guide you through it all and in, in my case brian here was my mentor 
Like he was able to guide me through it all. He he's been doing business for like what like 10 years now yeah Nine, just about years. yeah yeah like a decade right so all of his experience that he accumulated throughout all those years and all the mistakes he's made he can now tell me about it so i don't have to make the mistake like i remember in the beginning he was i was doing like a process that wasn't necessarily efficient or even really good and he just told me right away stop doing that do this instead and then because i listened to him and with that guidance i was able to then pivot and then I changed the way we do things. We got more efficient. We got more profitable, profitable and all. We of that. hired right away. Yep. Right. Like he was doing marketing that he's not good at. Mm-hmm. Hire somebody. But that's just like a, one example. And I want it to be specific because I don't want, you know, the viewers out there are going to be like, well, what is it? It's just, there's a number of things. Mm-hmm. And Jonathan's good because he's coachable. Mm-hmm. So be coachable. That's the number one thing. Number one, you have to understand that you know, especially starting out, you know nothing, okay? And other people with egos, they would be like, well, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out on my own. I'm mm-hmm. going to make the mistakes. Mm-hmm. Wrong mindset. The mistakes that are made, right, people think that, oh, you know, you have to make mistakes to learn. No, you don't. You don't have to make mistakes to learn. You have mm-hmm. to work hard. There's no, there, there, there's no shortcuts to that. You have to work hard. You have to put in the time. You have to put in the effort. But you don't have to make the same mistakes, mm-hmm. right? That's that's like the, the the thing that pisses me off the most when people are like, no, like let him make the mistakes. He has to learn on his own. No, you don't. You have to understand the mistakes so that you don't make it again. But you don't like, or you don't have to, you know, so you don't make that mistake ever, but you don't have to actually experience it yourself. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. But yeah. I don't know. What other questions you got, PJ? For, for sure, me? for sure. I, I, I mean... Thanks for that uh, that story, Jonathan. Appreciate it, man. I, I didn't know any of that, but I want to ask. Um, this is kind of kind of for for Brian, and essentially um, also. Uh, but what did you know as a mentor? Like, what do you think are the key things that that Brian has taught you? Because Brian's actually not, you know, I don't I, I don't think you're a photographer, a videographer. Are, are you? I don't know anything about it. All right, that's why. I- yeah, but but your mentor <laughs> was somebody in a completely different industry. Mm-hmm. And uh, what do you think are some of the key things that Brian has taught you as a mentor? Yeah, so because I was coming from the photo video background, that mm. was knowledge that I knew already. And freelancing by myself before starting all this, I already had that knowledge. But mm-hmm. what I needed, and like even in the beginning, I was like. I literally asked him, like, dude, how do you even start a business? Like, I thought it was super complicated to start a business and everything. And he was like, dude, no, it's the easiest thing ever. You just need to sell something and make money from it. That's a business. So I was like, okay. And I was really lacking the whole, like, business side of knowledge that Brian had. Mm -hmm. So that was, like, one of the big things I learned was, like, everything to do with business, how to do marketing, what's great ways to do with marketing, how to hire people, when to hire people. And, you know, how to even just go out there and just make a sale or two, even when I know the day is free, I can then just now go out there and be like, hey, you need any this? And then I can just fill up my schedule right away. It's like little, like little things like that, even over time, like there was many, many things throughout these past 11 months. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I think he got hung up on a lot of people get hung up on the legal aspect mm-hmm. of it too. Like, oh, my God, Nick, you know, do I start an LLC? Do I start an S Corp? Mm-hmm. Go out there and make money first mm-hmm. because those those LLCs and those S-Corps, they do cost money to form. They don't cost a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But when you're starting out, a couple hundred bucks is a lot of money. Yeah, definitely. Not to mention, like, you know, to file the taxes at the end of the year, mm-hmm. your CPA charges you for your personal and the mm-hmm. corporation, right? So don't even worry about that. Just make sure that you're actually able to produce income. Yeah. Once you make money, then you can start the company. And it's so easy. Legal Zoom. I have an attorney that does it for me. Yeah. So- Yeah, I mean, I think all that stuff is, uh, you know, definitely you don't need that stuff in the beginning. You know, you got to see if it's good first. You got to see if, you know, people want the product. And I mean, it's like, you know, you see it's like food companies, right? Mm -hmm. Some people like get caught up and like, oh, I need the the food license. I mean, you know, definitely should in the future, you know, but, you know, in the beginning, it's like, hey, like, just get it going. Sell some people, you know, there's street vendors all the time. We probably don't have, you know, know? like my my cousin owns a a corn dog stand. They just did Mm -hmm. an event yesterday, $8,000. But you know how they started? They just started with a cooler and just going out to like birthday parties and serving it up. Yeah. My buddy who owns a berry, my my cousin, he's like my family member, but he owns a berry uh, jerky. Mm -hmm. That shit's fire. Yeah. He just, he started off just selling it on Instagram. You want it? He bagged it up and he did it. And 
just start. I don't even yeah. know if he has a health department. Yeah, can you imagine how long you know, it would like, take if you're like, oh, I'm gonna get the licensing, I'm gonna get the LLC going, and then then I will sell, then I'll be ready. When yeah. you're big and you have a lot to lose, do it right. When you're small and you're a nobody mm-hmm. and you're not even worth the attorney to sue you, yeah, just start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that Take was notes, that was Take the mindset notes. that I started off with because right after Brian told me all that, I was like, screw it, okay, let's just start. So yeah. I literally graduated college and we dived straight in. Mm-hmm. Just started working, trying to book up schedules, trying to book up shoots, trying to just get my name out there. And then eventually, like, I would say the third or fourth month in was the turning point to where things started, like, scaling. I think that was the point where I reached over 10K in monthly sales, like gross sales. Wow. No, faster Great. than that. Faster than that. We I hit? think it was like 10K in like two in like two and a half months. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's it was amazing. faster. See, Jonathan doesn't track numbers. I track numbers. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. QuickBooks, we looked at it. It was quick. Yeah. Um, that's a good accomplishment. That's a really good accomplishment for like, you know, from a creator standpoint, like, yo, that's a win. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are killing it. <laughs> um, I want to go ahead and I want to ask you, Jonathan, like, you know, starting from, you know, fresh out of college, going into... You know this new space starting a new business like what were some of like the struggles and, and the fears that you had or if you had any like going in like were you scared to like start a business because i mean it's it's not the the typical thing that you know yeah. one just does like hey i'm gonna start a business you know risk it all you know yeah um so that whole thing that whole meme of people saying when you know you don't want to work a nine to five but you end up working 24 7 mm-hmm. that's so true like Cause mm-hmm. at the end of the, now, like, you know, this business is essentially my life is my livelihood. It's like everything. And mm-hmm. obviously it's now like my little baby too. Mm-hmm. So I obviously want it to grow. So it's always that constant thing of like, okay, I got to work. I got to work. I got to work in order to, you know, grow this business and make money. Right. But I would say one of the biggest fears was really that whole sense of like failing in mm-hmm. a way, you know, like, oh, like, you know, what if I don't, What if it doesn't work out? What if I miss on this sale? Like back then, I used to always hate saying no to to anything because to me, each each inquiry equals a new job that I can then use to then grow the business more Mm -hmm. and keep growing, growing, growing. So then I would try to never say no, even if the shoot was like far away, like out there in Tracy or Sacramento or something like that. Yeah. I would be more inclined to say yes, even though they're not going to pay me that much just because I wanted that sale. Mm -hmm. Or if they were like, let's say a difficult client Mm -hmm. trying to ask for a lot, but then not willing to pay for it and all in that, I was still kind of thinking like, you know what, maybe I should just do it. It could lead to somewhere. But then like after doing it for so long, I now realize there's, there's a point to where you kind of have to say no because it's just not worth it. Doesn't make sense business wise or whatever, and it'll just cost more than it's worth. Yeah, definitely. We have a rule. He doesn't go out unless it's two hundred bucks. It, it has to come out to about like two hundred bucks an hour. Mm-hmm. Like if it's less than that, mm-hmm. because you know now you're running a company. You're not a small mom and pop shop anymore. You know we have editors. We have, um, you know, a bunch of stuff. I mean our overhead is high now, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so he, he it, t- it took him a while to learn that. But in the beginning, I told him, like, there's a time and a place to just go out and do it to get your name out there. Because in the beginning, the first two months, it was about learning. Mm-hmm. His, you know, like, how do you perfect your craft? Mm-hmm. And if you can't, if you're not going out there and you're, you're actively doing the job, you're not going to know mm-hmm. some of the, how to, how to get better. So, yeah. and for real, like, doing that, I learned so much. Like, even, everyone would kind of think that real estate photography is, like, easy. You know, you just go in, take a few pictures of the house, you're done. No, there's so many things that you need to be worried about, like the staging, the toilet seat, even having the door frames in the images. Like, I had toilet seats up. I had door frames in my images. Like, the staging was kind of wonky and whatnot because I didn't pay attention to adjust it. But, see, if I did not just go out and shoot and just try, I would not have known that. Yeah. So toilet seats up are not a good thing. Bad. bad. Very bad. <laughs> bad. All right. Cool. Very cool. Bad. Cool. Cool. Didn't know that. Didn't know that. All right. So I wanted to ask. Um, I wanted to ask. So you're saying that, you know, you're now at a point where you could be selective. And I want to get Brian's take on this, too. For anybody who's trying to start their own business, you know, whether it be in like photography or videography or, or maybe something else. Right. Um, you're at a place now where you could say no and, and turn down some clients. 
would you would you say that would you recommend that to somebody beginning to be selective and be strategic because you're over here you know like two hundred dollars an hour this and that like what's best for you like what is your advice to, to somebody who's just starting out let me take this one so i mean that's a two-part question number one in the beginning when you're starting out you got to find your niche mm -hmm. so our niche was real estate mm -hmm. because number one i have the contacts i have the network i have the uh, i know what people want i know what they're charging so that was the niche. Now, in the beginning, like I said, in the first two months, it was more about getting them out there and getting them comfortable. So we took every job. Didn't matter the price because the, le the, the, the learning was more important than the money. Now that he has reached that point, and I'm not saying he, he doesn't have room to learn. You're always learning in life. But now that you're, we know what we need to bring in, dollar, right, the, the dollar amount, now you be selective. Now you can be choosy, mm -hmm. right? Because now it's about how do we turn a profit? In the beginning, it's about how do you learn and become efficient? How do you become better? And so Jonathan, I'll let you kind of jump in more on that. It's like, do you agree? Yeah, no, I totally agree with that 100%. Even like, like a lot, what I would really honestly recommend when you're starting out and like whether you have some work in your portfolio to show or none at all for the specific niche, like in this case, real estate photography, go out there, contact all the agents in your area and just literally just offer a free photo shoot. Because one of the yep. biggest things I've learned this year is provide value first, money comes later. Because if you provide that value, you give them the best experience possible. You make you, they enjoy working with you. All of that, all these positives, they'll call you again. They'll call you for the next one. And then you do a great job, the next one, and the Great. next one. And then that's Great. how it snowballs. I think that's a, a massive principle that you, as a beginner, uh, like going into business, you need to understand, you know, like you have to provide value. Like for me, if if I'm like, oh man, like I don't have any business, like I'm like, how can I provide value to somebody? All I got to do is like, hey, you want, let's do this. Like I'll do this for you. Mm -hmm. And they always like more than ever always turns into a lead. Yeah. You know, 100%. actual sale. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. In business, in the beginning, you have nothing but time. Go out there. I, I mean, I, I, how many times did I tell you, just go out there and do it for free? Yeah. I was like, just go out times. there and do it. Yeah. I mean, do or do it for 50% off. Mm. Right? In the beginning, you can do that. And so, that's the cool part. And I don't know. What else do we want to ask? What do you want to ask, Ryan? Oh, man, what really you got? Know. What you got to ask for Jonathan? We you got know? him in the hot seat. So Yeah. So, now, now that, you know, I like to always ask people, like, what do you want to, where do you see yourself in a year, three years, and five years? with this company or in general, just in personal, like what, what's your goals? Yeah, I guess right now, like the, I feel like the ultimate goal for this company is to get it to a point where it runs on its own, mm. where I don't necessarily have to be in the day-to-day -day operations anymore. If anything, even just a managerial role or even just try to get it to the point where I'm just totally just hands off. There's someone else pointing at a CEO running the company, doing all the day-to-day, -day, and then there's teams of editors, shooters, sales, marketing, the whole whole thing. And we can get there. Yeah, yeah. you guys are well on your way, so. The main thing, and I, I'm, I, you know, I probably told Jonathan this all the time, is that you can get there as long as the lead flow is good. Mm -hmm. If your lead flow is good, we can hire the editors. We can hire the, the photographers. That's the easy part. It's just gathering the lead, making sure that the quality of the systems and processes are in place, to where when you step out, the quality doesn't drop. The customer service doesn't drop. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. I think we can get there in two years, but it's up to whether Jonathan, there's still work that needs to get done. So it's, it's up to him if he's going to do it or not. I believe in him. I believe yeah. in him. So what's three years? What's a personal goal? Um, I guess a personal goal, maybe in three years, I ideally want to get into my first property. As well, because, you know, I'm in the real estate space now and throughout just even shooting all of these reels for all these realtors, I would say I learned a lot about the real estate industry, how it all works, investments, everything all about it. So now I'm also kind of interested in kind of getting into like either an investment property or even just buying my first little like house just to start building my wealth overall. Yeah, love it. Nice. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy to think that like, you know, you just, you just chase your passions and do what you love. And then yeah. you just like learn so much around good people. And then, well, he's learn. lucky because his passion was, is, is like a, a in demand. Yeah. I don't believe that all passions will make money. 
people do do it, but mm -hmm. in like this space right now with the video and the and the photography, it's a big business. Yeah, mm -hmm. because social media is so big. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad he got into the right industry. He got into the right passion, right? But if you were passionate about, I don't know, bird watching, how much money can you really make? I mean, I'm sure. Somebody, I, just, I, I'm, I'm I was sure gonna somebody, say I disagree because I, I feel like I feel well, like there's a way. Let's talk about it. Let's, I mean, yeah, at the end of the Gio. day, I think if if I mean, I think you can make money in your passions doing. There's a way, like, and there's always a way. I mean, whether it's not like maybe you can't, you know, service, but at the end of the day, like YouTube, social media, and all that could definitely change your life. And hey, if you're into bird watching, if you're that cool guy who's, I'm sure, I'm sure <laughs> watching yeah. birds and is like, man, maybe doing some crazy stuff, the doing some backflips while though, watching birds. People, <laughs> people the problem with that. that is that you know, so I, I agree with you. Eventually. Every, you know, if you stick at it long enough, it can become mm -hmm. profitable. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that like, for example, bird watching and mm -hmm. starting a YouTube, what if it doesn't take off for two, three years, four, five, ten years? Yeah. And you, you know, yeah. how are you going to feed yourself? Yeah. I right? mean, there's maybe some more obvious ways yeah. that it's like, hey, this one's going to make money. Yeah. Yeah. But and for the, that's average, just the business side, for the of you, average you know? person like listening to this and the and the, the new entrepreneur starting like. Start off by understanding if whether or not your passion pays the bills today, mm -hmm. right? Or because the easier route is get into something that makes money and then make money and and then go do what you're passionate about. Yeah, that's I was just the easier route that too. Yeah. yeah, like I'm not saying don't don't follow your passion, but come on, man, this this you got to eat, you got to live. Mm -hmm. And if you're starting, if I were to start a bird watching business today, I'm not sure how much I can turn. And make that profitable. Yeah. Or if it's even worth my time. Yeah. You know? I mean, hey, if you love bird watching <laughs> and you and you need to make some money, I mean, you better find yeah. a way that you could make a ton of money. I think everybody should learn how to make a ton of money and then do what they love, you know? Yeah. Like Yeah. So that's why I chose real estate specifically mm -hmm. because Granted, within the realm of photography and videography, there's so many different niches you can mm -hmm. go with. And I chose specifically real estate because it was the most monetizable mm -hmm. compared to the amount of work you need to do to get it done versus yeah. like, like before this, I was really into shooting a lot of cars. I still am. I just don't do it as much anymore because I just don't have the time for it. Mm -hmm. But shooting cars is really hard to monetize mm -hmm. versus real estate. Get paid right away. Very true. And yeah. it's quick. Very and if true. you screw up, you can always go back. The property is there. Yeah. And it's always going to be there. People, Real estate is always going to be there. People are always going to need, you know, marketing stuff for their properties. So, yeah, a yeah, very, very lucrative market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's end it with this. What is the, if you can give yourself like, uh, I mean, this works more for people who kind of been in the business longer. Mm -hmm. But if you were to, if you were to go back in this last 11 months or even let's just go back to college, what would you do differently in your life right now? As of up to now, 24 years old, what would you tell the other 24 year olds? So honestly, I would have probably started this business way earlier. As I probably could have started this when I was 18, like okay. after high school. I just didn't know. Like mm. I genuinely at that time, all I thought about was, oh, I'm going to college. I'm going to do, I'm going to study marketing, which didn't even happen. I have an art degree now, but is to just start earlier like start now don't wait just start now like at this very moment you have an idea you have something just start now you'll learn as you go because see if i start when i was 18 i'm 24 now i could have already had all the knowledge and we probably would have been already rock and rolling yeah jonathan says point. don't go to college guys nah, 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 nah. <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna I, you know i have my opinions on college i think it's not worth it but i do agree that you know some people do need it yeah for it sure. does build it, it's fun if you do it right and i didn't do it right because i didn't have any money but you can party you can have some good funds make yeah. some good relationship that's what it's about um that's what but, i think too but here's the thing with this podcast i want to i want to this i want to give people homework whatever it is that you want to start you can do it right there's 24 hours in a day Start, start the business, go to school, do both. Now, prioritize whichever one you think is more important to you. That's for you to figure out, but you can start the business and make side hustle money, make some, you know, Jonathan's making big boy money now. But if you're 18, 19, 20, 21, you could start making some, even if you're making 250 a shoot. Yeah, like literally my day. last semester of college on the weekends, or I mean, I kind of skipped class for some shoots just because I thought, making the money was more important than the classes I had. 
But like, even if you have classes, just do it part time. Like maybe just do it on the weekends or something like that too, and then just make that little side income, and then eventually, you can scale it up. Because you're gaining the experience. But if you wait till you finish college to actually start, well, you just wasted time, right? Like so, even if you're investing an hour, two hours a day on your craft, on the business, when you're ready to go full time, if you choose to go that route, boom, you're ready to go. You you have a better sense of uh you know you have a better base than if you were to just start later on i see it so many people wait all the time yeah like they're waiting to get their real estate license i'm like dude start cold calling uh today as a wholesaler yeah start learning the lingo right yeah. and then when and then when you get the test and you pass the test start doing full-on real estate agent stuff but yeah. most people wait to be like oh i'm, I'm gonna wait till i pass the test yeah why yeah. now now you pass the test and now you're like okay hey what is escrow Bro, you should have learned what that is like before. Yeah. That doesn't require a license to know what it is, you know? Yeah. Um, but I agree. Up? I agree. Yeah. So I think we're closing up on the last minute. We're going to wrap this podcast yeah. up. I just want to ask Jonathan one last question. Let's man. go. Any, what is your piece of advice that you would give to maybe an 18 year old out there, just got out of high school, who's like, oh, I want to do exactly what you're doing, right? I want to be the best videographer i want to own my own company right i want to make 100k like jonathan mm -hmm. sue what's yeah. your advice uh one of the biggest things it's definitely mindset like you have to have the right mindset and what i mean by that is so there's the artist mindset and then there's the business mindset i had the artist mindset for the longest time because the artist mindset i would say is about you and your work mm -hmm. nothing else matters it's all about you and that's bad in business because in business, it should never be about you. It should be about your clients and providing that value. And that's one thing I had to learn this year because I was always so nitpicky about my own craft, like something little thing in this video. And then now I just keep going back, revising the video, keep re-editing, re-editing, re-editing. What does that do? That wastes time. So instead of trying to just perfect your craft, as long as your craft is good enough, especially if you're just starting off, as long as it's good enough, just roll with it. As you go, you'll eventually improve on it. But just don't spend so much time worrying about your craft and just get started right away. Like it. Like it. All right. Thanks, guys, for listening. I appreciate it. And uh, oh, do us a favor. If you like the podcast, make sure you give us five stars. Yep. Share with your friends. And if you want the full video, it's also on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys in the next one. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jonathan. Yep. Peace. Peace.